Hi, Dr. Regan Robertson, CCO of Productive Dentist Academy here, and I have a question for you. Are you finding it hard to get your team aligned to your vision, but you know you deserve growth just like everybody else? That's why we've created the PDA Productivity Workshop. For nearly 20 years, PDA workshops have helped dentists just like you align their teams, get control of scheduling, and create productive practices that they love walking into every day. Just imagine how you will feel when you know your schedule is productive, your systems are humming, and your team is aligned to your vision. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We can help. Visit ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop. That's ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop to secure your seats now. We've over exceeded those expectations in reality. So to be able to come to a client saying this is doable and we've seen it happen is is comforting to them. It's it's confidence building in us as a team because we have that history already. This isn't something we've thought we could do. There is you know, evidence that we have done it and done more. Welcome to Investment Grade Practices Podcast, where we believe private practice dentists deserve to get the lifestyle today while building an asset for tomorrow. Join your host, Victoria Peterson, to design the practice of your dreams and secure your financial independence. Let's get started. I am here today with one of the most amazing people on the planet, Miss Christine Yuen. She's in San Diego, California. Christine and I have known each other for at least 18 years. And when Bruce and I founded Productive Dentist Academy, we knew one thing for sure. We didn't want to be the ones getting on a plane and going in office with clients. And we have a philosophy that you only delegate to someone who will do the job as well or better than you could do it yourself. Christine, welcome to Investment Grade Practice Podcast. So great to have you here today. Always good to spend time with you, Victoria. Thank you for that. And thank you for the Million Miler Club that I've earned on Delta. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. Did you get, did you get the really groovy uh, luggage or a Tiffany's? What did you choose? Did you get? I, I did get some lovely um, accoutrement, uh, some, some lovely, uh, the little travel bag that I did get. From Delta. Oh, yes. So I, still I, have it. I chose the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I chose the same thing. All right. So this podcast is all about building investment grade practices. And sometimes it's worth repeating. What does that mean to have an investment grade practice? And what does it take to build an investment grade practice? So that's why I wanted to have you on here today. Um, our process, uh, which, you know, we've trademarked our process. We've trademarked the name investment grade practice mm -hmm. and you sit right in the middle of it. So what is an investment grade practice? We'll just start there. Yes. The, and again, I just love that we've developed this as experiential, you know, as a need of the marketplace. And as things have changed, it's about creating a practice that creates a lifestyle now for the owners. It is a good, viable, successful business that sustains a lifestyle now, but also looks ahead and becomes an asset that has value for the future. And that really is something that is sustainable, repeatable, and durable, that we have something that is predictable, whether the doctor is there or not, and that also, you know, has longevity. So we are really moving from the shorter vision of can I be profitable to is it something that someone else sees as value in terms of the long-term future for the dentist? I'm so glad you pointed that out. It sounds simple and it sounds almost assumed that of course I own my practice. Of course it's an asset. However, the statistic that nine out of 10 dentists can't retire and maintain their lifestyle still prevails. And so I don't think we can assume that just because you've been in practice 20 years or 40 years, that it's a sellable asset. And there's, there's heartbreaking stories about that. When some clients come to us from fear and short on time of, I need to retire in five years and I need to double my practice because I've been told it's not worth 
what my financial planner has told me I need to sell it for. Those are heartbreaking stories, but they we get those calls way too often. And they are they're hard to to have those conversations of, well, time is short, let's get to work. <laughs> yeah, and then the good news is is that a, a lot of times we can help uh, practitioners in that situation. And sometimes we can't. Um, right. Just in all transparency, PDA got its first negative review in 18 years uh, on Google. And it was a one star said, I met you at a dental conference, not one of our conferences. And then when I followed up was told that PDA couldn't help them. Mm -hmm. But the reality is for that dentist, and I did meet with that dentist, is that she was underwater and on her way to bankruptcy. And so it was not appropriate for us to come in and charge consulting fees because we don't specialize in that type of consulting. But for the top 5%, 10%, which is my goal that what we do with clients become the standard. There's no reason that 95% of dentists wouldn't successfully build an asset and build generational wealth. So let's talk about how we do that today. You said that we uh, evolved as the marketplace has evolved. And really what has evolved is the way practices are bought and sold. That is a huge change that's happened in the last, you know, several years in the dental industry. But we really think about when you hire, when you call a coach and what are you looking to have a consultant or a coach to? Generally, there's some pain points. There is some sort of stressor that is causing the dentist to reach out for help. Everything from, you know. I'm struggling with HMOs or PPOs. I'm struggling with team. I don't have enough new patients. There's something that prompts that call. And that is very traditional uh, type of consulting and coaching that, that we have provided and still do. Because whatever stresses out a doctor will kill their productivity. That's the number one killer of productivity. So moving uh, anybody, but in our world, dentists away from their stressor will make them better clinicians, leaders, business owners. So that's always level one is to move away from the, uh oh, I don't have something to you know, that scarcity mentality to, okay, now I'm comfortable. I'm de-stressed. I'm getting a little more predictable. But the reality of that is that's a whole nother level of coaching opportunities, the challenges of abundance. We grow practices. That's what we do. We've been very successful at that, growing productivity, growing profitability, creating more value and a good, successful business. But now what's, what's phase two? What's next after that? And many individuals or firms don't know what to do with that challenge of abundance. So now this is where, again, our methodology of looking at this more comprehensively, looking at the practice globally, now that I'm out of stress, what is next? Well, what is next is not something small, usually. And in this environment, the sooner the conversation happens, go back to that one dentist that is asking in you know, a few years to retire, let's make more money. Well, why don't we have that conversation sooner than later? I've heard it said, it's never too early to talk about your exit strategy, whether that's five, 10 or 20 years. I don't think anybody plans on retiring with a drill in their hand or with, you know, passing away with a drill in their hand. That's what gets into my coffin with me kind of thing. Get it on, you know, I can't pull it out of their hand because we all want to have that retirement we enjoy. Well, if we could have that happen sooner than later, why wouldn't we have that dream? Yeah. And, and so, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing more people retire in practice, if you will. Yes. And so again, that putting people at financial choice where work becomes an option, work becomes the choice that I make. And even if it's choosing different pieces of dentistry, maybe I only want to narrow my focus to a certain service mix, but then I also still want to service my patients who are, you know, an extension of my family. So now we're talking growth and expansion and transitions of adding providers, adding service mix, adding hygiene, adding operatories, adding locations. The very exciting conversations that we are having with our clients now of not what do you want to be in 2023, where do you want to be in 2028, right? Think bigger. And can I share a story, Vicki? 
May sure, I, may I do that? sure. This just happened recently. We're talking to one of our clients who we've had as a client for three and a half years, and we have been able to grow her successfully um, partnership um, through the pandemic. I mean, record months, record quarters, best year ever, right, in 2022, on track to break every record. And I literally got to have a conversation with her about, so where do we go from here? You have opportunities to grow bigger. How big do you want to go? Right. So literally she shared with me a number that she wanted to earn in five years. She had a check that she wanted to write to herself for a certain dollar number. And literally when she and I sat down and were able to calculate profitability, cash flow, take home money over the next five years and what that value of her practice would be in five years, I kid you not, was just over $10 million. Wow. It was almost to the penny, (laughs) to the day that we could actually say, we can help you do that. We have the strategies, the methods, the team of advisors that would support her and her team to have that happen. We were both nearly in tears about this, just the joy. I had not known that was her goal, but we had created this strategy, just thinking outside the box of what if and why not. Those are some great questions to ask doctors. What if and why not? What if and why not? I love that. And I want to break this down so it doesn't sound so mystical, right? Like, Christine Ewan has a crystal ball, and it matches up with my big dream. <laughs> so, I don't know about you, Victoria, but mine broke in 1989. My crystal ball <laughs> broke in that but, era. Oh, mine's a little dusty. But what we did do is when Dr. David Porrick came on board, you and David and I, we poured through 20 years of consulting data, and we looked at how do practices that are intentional on optimizing their marketing, optimizing their team, optimizing their time, and it's not about being bigger or busier. In fact, being productive is the exact opposite Mm -hmm. of being busy. So when you become productive, and you're focused on optimizing the systems around it so there's no wasted effort and a lot of busyness. We've noticed that doctors have time and space for more clinical education and everything rises because of that. But here's the cool thing that happened with that research. We saw a predictable trend and a predictable pattern where doctors would grow on average 25 to 30 percent in the first year with PDA and an additional 20 to 30% in the second year. And they sustained that 15 to 20% growth year over year, over year, over year. Bruce was growing $300 an hour. I don't even, for 15 years in a row, he went from 800 an hour to 1250, blah, 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 blah. He retired out at 4,000 an hour or plus. Not because he was working harder. He was working Mm -hmm. two days a week, but because he brought his team with him, he up-leveled their skills, delegated to the max, and had a marketing uh, machine that was optimized to bring in the ideal patient. So you now have, because of the research that our team did, and David created this amazing crystal ball. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. So with the simple number of what do you collect today, you can predict with some pretty darn great accuracy, not based on a 20 percent growth model or a 30 percent, but on a 12 percent, like go a yeah. half or a third of what we know doctors can how they change and evolve when they optimize using 12 percent for three years and seven percent. Like compare that to standard, if you don't know, and you're listening to this, standard growth is 5 to 7% a year for a dental practice. Standard growth for DSOs uh, are 5 to 7%. They want predictable, calm, stay in my comfort zone, let me grow a little bit to overcome inflation, but they don't tap into the potential that's there. 
So what do you see when you put numbers into that? So you're not just grabbing $10 million out of the air. How does that work? Yeah. Well, and it, it was really, it was eye-opening for both of us that, uh, that we were that in sync. That is, that is what we're looking at is, you know, a healthy EBITDA of, you know, 20% and looking at very conservative growth, exactly what you said, 12% predictive over the next couple of years and even less after that, the 7% growth, that literally being able to show the comparison between, you know, selling now versus selling later, selling to DSOs, you know, owning it yourself, um, cash flow over time. It is astounding that when you do look at your business as an investment, meaning I should be putting money back into it, right? There is some what does it take to be an investment grade practice means that I have focus on what is going to grow my business without overtaxing myself, working harder, overtaxing the team or overspending. So it is very, it's extremely conservative and manageable in the fact that our dreams aren't, they aren't in the crystal ball. They aren't in the ethos. This is do and it's been done and we've done we've over exceeded those expectations in reality so to be able to come to a client saying this is doable and we've seen it happen is is comforting to them it's it's confidence building in us as a team because we have that history already this isn't something we've thought we could do there is you know evidence that we have done it and done more i so love it that, but again, sometimes that is what a doctor needs too. Anybody that's talking about investing needs some confidence. So the, the track record is a huge comfort to our clients, as well as to us as, as advisors to know this isn't something we hope can be done. Hope is not a good business strategy, <laughs> right? And so really being able to tie in real numbers, real history, real systems that we know do create the efficiency, the optimization, and the results that we're looking for is a gift to be able to give to our clients, to be their Absolutely. partner in that thinking. Yeah. Well, and I, and I want to reiterate that we are in a unique period of time where uh, stock market's going crazy, you know, depending on what the feds do with interest rates, uh, oil and gas and dependable things are going nuts with, you know, civil wars and, and world wars pending. Uh, and so private equity investors are looking for secure ROI over time. So we are seeing that even a few years ago where you might have gotten a five times your net profits or earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization, affectionately known as EBITDA. EBITDA. So if it was a three to five multiple, then it's six to eight multiple. Now there are different strategies that without doing a darn thing different in your practice, your practice could be worth more. So it's a great time if, if you've not had a, and, and this is the fun part too, is the only time doctors get a valuation of their business is like six months before they want to sell time it. To sell. Right. It's almost like, selling your house. You can't think about that in that way. The average sale today is happening when you're 41 years old. So Isn't that incredible. It is incredible. And I'm so glad that you are such a knowledge, knowledgeable business advisor. I mean, before you came to PDA, you were with Mercer Group and you've been studying finance and strategies with dentists for three decades. I mean, you know your stuff and you help our doctors understand how to move along that path of clinician to entrepreneur to investor. And that's a journey and that's a path. And imagine if you're 40 years old and you found a way to pull some of the equity off the table, pay off all of your debt, and then take the proceeds, put that back into commercial real estate or back into other investments. You're debt free, you're stress free, you're living your life, you love your clinical skills, you still have ownership on part of the practice, and you're leveraging that equity later. Those strategies are now available where they weren't even three years ago. And that's the exciting part. Um, and then 
I was just say there's another story in there too about it when we're talking about growing and getting bigger. It's also about the value of time. And there are, mm. you know, when you think about, like you were saying about taking equity off now and using that money toward other things, getting stress-free, reducing your time in the practice to be with family, whether that's the young kids you have now. Again, I was just, these are so meaningful stories. I was on a call with another doctor who said, who is bringing on another associate, a second associate to be able to allow him as the owner time away from the practice that can still, you know, maintain its profitability when he's not there. He's going to be at every one of his son's football games. He's committed that to his 10 year old, you know, and so he's a young owner, but like you say, the entrepreneur who now realizes that it is worth reinvesting into another doctor in the practice, not to be more, more productive, but to have more time, which is just as valuable for him and his family. So I really appreciated when you said it's not just about getting bigger. You're right. What is most important to the client is our focus, not what we think their business should be. There are, they are independent business owners. They're entrepreneurs. They've got a vision. And for me as their business advisor to help them get clarity on that vision, I'm helping them polish their own crystal ball, right? This isn't my vision for their practice or PDA's vision, but it, being able to get them to say, no, 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 think bigger. It's not enough. Give me something bigger. Let's, <laughs> let's get juicier. There's one of a Victoria term. Let's get juicier. <laughs> and, but we get to do that. And like you said, the strategies that are in place now from equity, selling par- part of it, partnerships, multiple owners, all such options are out there for our clients. And we're excited to be able to, to present these options to them and help guide them to the best choice for them, lifestyle, financially and possibly legacy. Oh, I love that. I love that. I'm sitting here listening to you with just a big smile on my face because nine times out of 10, when we tap into the vision with our, with our doctors, it starts out as, um, oh no, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did, you know, I started out thinking, but nobody gets to do this. And, you know, it's all, it's just almost lost hope Mm -hmm. of, you know, and secret dreams. Like I want a BMW X6, X5. (laughs) Who do I tell that to? Because my neighborhood drives that, or I want a Ferrari, or sometimes if our, our, a uh, tangible expression of what wealth is can feel embarrassing, particularly to people in dentistry, because you come into this field with such compassion mm-hmm. and humbleness that it can feel undeserved to be so lucky. And that's another one of those challenges of abundance is you can self-sabotage going, I have enough. Think about all the people who are starving and right. all of that's there. What my experience is, is that um, the more financially secure you become, the more you are in a position to help. So, so getting that community connection and those heartfelt connections are all a part of that too. I'm going to wrap up with one thing. If, if you don't know, uh, if you haven't noticed yet, Christine and I love to work together. <laughs> we, have, we have these client talks every week. We're going through the portfolio and saying, but what if, and what if, so if you can, if you can discover your, um, you know, where you want to go and why that's important. Our team brainstorms behind the scenes on how do we get you there. And another client we were working on this week is like, well, they want to bring in a partner. They want to transition out of all insurances. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, wait a minute. They want to get off Delta Dental. Cool. I'm cool with that. But rather than that being a reactive because I don't have space in my schedule, how many patients is that? And what's it worth? And it was like, oh, yeah, 1,300 patients and $1.1 million. Nice. That's a whole nother business. Isn't there a three operatory space like down the road? Could we hire an associate? Could we, could we somehow set up a whole entire business? And you're like, oh, yeah, I already has a second location. We could probably move it there. But it's that kind of thinking because we're not in the weeds we get to see things differently than if you're in the stress of it of like, damn, I'm just tired of working with this insurance company. Get rid of them. (laughs) But when 
I don't know, McDonald's makes billions of dollars a year, 99 <laughs> cents at a time. I could surely take a Delta Dental patient base generating a million bucks and set up a business plan where it was profitable. And that owner doesn't have to be delivering the service, right? Right. Yeah. And again, that's the creativity that we get to, you know, again, this is the, the value of a team too. You know, this is you and I talking, this is us talking with our marketing strategists. This is us talking with the team development coach of who would be put there. So it, it is, these are such honorable conversations to be having to put our minds to that kind of elevation of an opportunity for another doctor who might just go, who might be just like you say, in the middle of it and stressed about it and just get rid of it. And yet I know in the heart of hearts, he also wants to take care of those patients. So we're going to help find a way to reduce his stress and still take great care of those patients. But that's who, that's who we are to be able to help our clients do that for their patients. Christine, thank you so much for your creativity. Thank you for your dedication. Uh, to the practices that we serve, you really are a, a terrific strategic thinking partner. So thank you for being here today. I've enjoyed every moment, anytime. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Investment Grade Practices Podcast. If you find value in this episode, help us spread the word by passing it along to a dental friend, subscribe, and give us a like on iTunes or Spotify. Learn more about building your investment grade practice at ProductiveDentist.com today. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Investment Grade Practices Podcast. If you find value in this episode, help us spread the word by passing it along to a dental friend, subscribe, and give us a like on iTunes or Spotify. Learn more about building your investment-grade practice at ProductiveDentist.com today.